Hello everyone and welcome back to our JRPG series. In the last episode we finished off our melee attacks with the effects and animations for the enemy characters. In this episode we're now going to work on our ranged attack characters. So getting our characters walk up to halfway between us and the enemy, firing off an attack before returning back to their position. So let's get started. So to get started with our ranged characters we're going to go into the combat component. And in the combat component, we've currently got set up our melee attack. Now the ranged attack is going to be very similar to this, but with a subtle differences. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this code that we have for the melee attack. And we're going to put it onto our range attack. Because it's going to be mostly the same, we just to edit the bits that are different. Like so. So the first thing that we want to do here is we need to change where they're going. Now, they're no longer going to be running towards the target actor. That's not the case. They're now going to run a little bit ahead of themselves, and then they're going to throw their projectile. So I'm going to disconnect the target actor and remove the unit target. Now, for the destination, that's going to come from a new function we're going to make. So we make a new function here, and we'll get range position. And the whole purpose of this is to figure out where it should stand when delivering a ranged attack. This will also work for magic later on as well. So for here I want to get the unit target. And I want to get the unit character. And I want to find their locations. So I'm going to get the actor location for this one. And the actor location for this one. We then want to find the direction between these two. So drag from here, type in direction, and we can get the unit direction. So we're taking, what the idea is, is we're going to take these two points and work out the direction we need to go, and then we're going to tell it to go a certain distance and make it move to that point. So this unit direction, let's move this down here, uh, we want to multiply this by how far we want them to go. So we multiply that by a float, and for now we'll just put in something like 500. And then we want to add this to their original starting position, which is this one here. So we're going to do plus vector. So this now gets us 500 units in front of us between us and the target. We then want to return that number. So add a return node and then drag in your vector into it like so. And then hook that up, handle that. I'm going to make this a pure function and this will make it a bit easier for us to use and pure functions are for like functions that don't need to set anything they're just mostly there for, to calculate stuff um, typically that's when you want to use them but they look like this that's a pure function so I can just drag this out and put that in there okay so that is uh, that first change there. The next bit is the play montage. So the play montage is going to play the attack montage, which for the range characters will be the same variable as this. So don't have to change nothing here. Next, we need to tell it to spawn an actor. And this will be the projectile it's going to spawn. So first thing I need to do is move this all along before it runs back. And I need to do a spawn actor. So I'm going to do this on notify begin on this character here. So notify begin is going to play when they're meant to release their projectile. So spawn actor from class. And we're going to plug this into there. And we'll skip the completed there. So on that if I begin, it'll do spawn actor and then it will do the move back. So uh sorry, not not move back, sorry. That'll spawn actor and then um on completed, then it would move back. That's right. Sorry, my bad. So the spawn actor here is going to be the class for the projectile. So I'm going to go and create a projectile class for this. So I'm going to go into my characters and uh, we'll make here a blueprint class, actor, and this will be the projectile class. And I'm going to go back to my component uh, here. And I'm going to set that as a variable. So this would be projectile class. And type for that will be projectile, maybe a class reference. And I'm going to drag that in and plug that into the class. The spawn transform is going to be the same as the character. So we're going to get the unit character. And we're going to get their actor transform. 
and put that into there. And the instigator of this will be the unit character. That way the enemy knows who hit them. So before we work on the projectile class, what I'm going to do is set up the ending of our ranged attack. So I actually want him not to run back until his projectiles hit. So if it's quite slow, he'll just wait for it to hit. So when, rather than completed here, I'm actually going to put this into a binding. So the spawn actor, I'm going to drag this return value out and do bind event on end play. And the event I want to bind to this is going to be a custom event. And this will be uh, end ranged attack. And we're going to simply just connect that up to uh, the rest of our code here to move it back to its original starting position. Okay. And that should be it. There's nothing else here to do on this character. Um, so what will happen is when we spawn the projectile, when it hits the enemy, we'll turn them to destroy. And when it, that happens, it will then trigger this to make him move back to the original destination. So let's work on our projectile class. And then compile this and save it and go to, over to that projectile. So on the projectile, we're going to add a projectile movement component. And on the movement here, we're going to tell it to have initial speed of, let's say, 3000, max speed of 3000. We're going to turn off gravity, so turn gravity down to zero. And we're going to make sure that the velocity has got one in the X. That's correct. We're then going to put in here a sphere collision. And we'll make that sphere collision the root component. So drag it onto the root to make it the root of the whole entire thing. We're then going to add a particle system to this for our various effects for the attack. Uh, and that's kind of it for this. We're going to go to the event graph now. And on begin play, we're going to tell it to ignore the one that cast it. So it doesn't hit anything else apart from himself. Uh, apart from his uh, target, sorry. So we're going to tell it to ignore actor when moving and choose the sphere and the actor will be get instigator and we're going to tick should ignore that'll stop the projectile hitting us and uh, not the enemy and on the hit event we're going to do a spawn emitter for the effect at the location so spawn emitter at location and the emitter template is going to be a variable. So we're going to drag that out and promote that to variable. And we call this one impact effect. Okay. And the location will be zero because it's relative to itself. So we leave it at zero. We're then going to tell it to um, get the instigator. And from the instigator, I want to cast that to unit base. Plug this in here. And from there, I want to get their combat component. And then from that, get their target. So this is very similar to how we've done the damage notify in the last episode. So we're going to get their unit target. And apply damage. The damage actor here, we're going to drag from unit target. The base damage is going to come from the combat component. We work out the damage with calculate damage. Again, we did that in the last episode. And plug that in. And that will go into base damage. And the damage causer will be as unit base. There. And the damage type class, we can also promote that to a variable. So we can set that later on when we start dealing with that stuff too. Compile. Next, we're going to make it destroy the actor as well. So we're going to put a little delay in there. And then tell it to destroy. So I'm going to put a little delay of like one second and then destroy actor. And when it destroys, it will trigger that binding we set up earlier and send the character back to the start. Compile, save. And that's it here. Okay, so um, alongside this, one thing we will put in here as well is we go to class defaults and set the lifespan to be, uh, let's say, three seconds. 
So if it does miss the target and keeps on going, we'll make it destroy itself after three seconds regardless. Okay, we can close that. And we're gonna make a child of this. And this will be a uh, phase uh, attack projectile. And is that the E there? And then we also want to do another child for Gideon. Gideon attack projectile. And we're going to set up their various settings. So the Gideon attack, by going here, I can choose the different impact effect here. If I type in Gideon, I'll find in there his uh, normal attack that he has from Paragon. So if I go primary, uh, hit event, so it hit character. I think that's a good one to do for the impact effect. Yeah, I think so. And on the particle system here on the on the components, we're gonna do Gideon. And I think it's called primary uh projectile. And it'll look like this when it loads up. Okay. Compile and save that. Um okay. So that would do for that. Um, one thing I might do as well with projectile is make it sure that rotation follows its velocity. Take that to be true. Uh, we'll see how that looks, but nonetheless. Uh, so that's Gideon's one done. Let's do phase one. And in her one, uh, oh, that's her unit. Done that. We want the Fay projectile. And on that one, a particle system here, we'll type in Fay. And we're looking for the hair projectile. But just look around. Uh, da, 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 da. Primary, what's this look like? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, it's like a flying seed basically. And I'm going to go to its class defaults and set the impact here to Fay. Hit and we'll see primary hit player and hit compile and save. Okay, so now we have to set those to use that on their units. So go to Fay unit, go to a combat component, set up the projectile class to use Fay attack projectile, and tick is ranged character. Then I'll go to Gideon and very similarly combat component is range character and choose the projectile class here or get in attack projectile so all that's left now is add our montage notifiers to our attack montages so go to Gideon's one here first and we want the point where it's going to do the projectile so go out like this there okay it looks pretty good there so I'm gonna go right click and add a montage notifier and that will trigger the montage notifier on the node itself and we're going to do exactly the same for phase. So go to phase one, primary attack, and find her point where the projectile comes out. So about there, a notifier, montage notifier. Okay, so save all that, and let's test this out. So Gideon, uh, Greystone will go first, which we know works from last time. And then it'll be Gideon, I think. Yep, and attack. Default spider. So don't need attack animation, but notice it didn't come out. Uh, that's fine. We'll check phase one and see how her one looking. Did it come out? Or maybe going too fast. Let's take a look at that again. We'll go full screen as well. Oh no, it is working. Uh, but it's just not dealing damage and hitting him. So the reason why it's not hitting him is probably because the collision settings haven't been set up correctly on the projectile. So let's go to the projectile, go to the sphere, and that's because I've left it as overlap 
yeah, that'd be why. So we need this to actually interact and hit pawns. So I'm going to change this to custom, and I'm going to change it to block pawns, and hit compile. This is a world dynamic object, and our pawn should block that too. So double check that. Let's go to our enemy, and have a look at this. Go to his capsule component, scroll down, and we should see him blocking world dynamic. That's fine. So let's test this out again. Go full screen, and it goes. And Gideon will then run to center. Yep, there you go. And perfect. Okay. So there are our attacks for our characters. We've got melee and we've got ranged attacks. So one last thing I want to do is I'm going to set it up so that my spiders don't all animate at the same time. So if you look here, they all in sync with the animations and it looks kind of weird. So what I'm going to do is desync it. So we go to the spider unit and go to their animation mesh. Or this so go to their animation blueprint open this up and I want to find their animation graph and look at their blend space here and you can see the start position here is zero if I change the binding of this to an expose as pin and then I'm gonna make this a random starting point so I'm gonna take out the start position and set it to a variable and this would be start position and on the event graph here, we're just going to randomly set that here on the uh, initialized event on begin initialize play animation. Sorry, and initialize animation. We're going to take that out, set, and do random float in range, and choose between zero and one, and that's it. So now they should all stagger their animations, so they won't all sync up. It makes it look a bit more natural. And there we have it. We have now got a ranged attack as well as our melee attack for our characters. All that's left now is to get the enemies to attack us back. So in the next episode, join me and we'll cover how to make the spiders attack us back and us to react to them. You can watch the episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can catch all my videos early before anyone else from your $1 subscription a month. Thanks so much for everyone supporting me over on Patreon and on YouTube members, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.